Private peering makes sense when there are very few equivalent players. Connecting to one other ISP costs x. Connecting to two other ISPs costs 2 times x. Connecting to three other ISPs costs 3 times x, and so on, where x is usually half the cost of the infrastructure, the circuit, plus a port cost. The more private peers, the greater the cost. And this doesn't scale. The costs go up as we add each private peering link. The Internet Exchange Point is a more scalable solution to this problem. Connecting to an exchange point means the ISP pays for one router port on their local border router, one circuit to where the exchange point location is, and potentially one router to locate at the exchange point. Some exchange points will charge annual maintenance fees. This goes towards the cost of the infrastructure, the air conditioning, the remote hands, and so forth. The maintenance fee actually has potential to significantly influence the cost balance for a service provider. Generally, connecting to an exchange point and peering there becomes cost effective when there are at least three other peers. But the real amount varies from region to region, from exchange point to exchange point. So who would peer at an exchange point? Access providers would go there because then they don't have to pay the regional provider transit fees for local traffic. This keeps latency low and it keeps the costs for local traffic low as well. And there's basically unlimited bandwidth through the exchange point compared with costly and limited bandwidth through the transit provider. Regional providers would also peer at an exchange point because they don't have to pay the global provider transit fees for local and regional traffic. And likewise, it keeps latency for local and regional traffic low, and it keeps the costs for local and regional traffic low. And again, there's unlimited bandwidth through the exchange point, at least when compared with costly and limited bandwidth through the global provider. We also find that content providers and content distribution services peer at exchange points. They don't have to pay the regional provider for transit fees for local traffic. Again, it helps latency and costs for local traffic. And again, they see the unlimited bandwidth through the exchange point infrastructure. For the same reason, we will find the root name server operators, country top-level domain operators, and the general top-level domain operators. This adds resiliency to the global DNS system, as well as keeping latency and response time for local resolver traffic very low. This effectively speeds up the DNS and gives the end user the impression that the internet is fast. Continuing the discussion about the exchange point's role, we also find that global providers will be located close to the exchange points. They can be attracted by the potential transit business available. They won't peer at the exchange point themselves, but they'll be located close by. And this makes it advantageous for the access and regional providers. They can peer with other similar providers at the exchange point, and in the same facility, they can pay for transit to the regional or global provider. They don't take the transit across the exchange point fabric. Most exchange points don't allow this. And anyway, it's not good practice. They generally provide a separate private connection back to our PNI to connect to the transit provider. Now let's look at the connectivity decisions. For a transit provider, you need that to reach the rest of the internet. So every ISP does need a transit provider. One provider is no redundancy. Two providers is ideal for traffic engineering as well as redundancy. Three providers gives even better redundancy, but we have to work a little bit harder with our traffic engineering. More than three provides diminishing returns, rapidly escalating costs and complexity, and is not recommended by most major operators today. Peering means low or zero cost access to another network. And peering can be private or public, as we've learned earlier. 
The goals of an operator are these. To minimize the number of transfer providers, but maintain redundancy. Two is ideal, four or more is getting really hard. Also, we want to aggregate capacity to our transit providers. The more aggregated capacity there is, the better the value we see, because of the lower cost per megabit per second as the bandwidth capacity grows. For example, four STM1 or OC3 links, which are 155 megabits each, to four different ISPs will almost always cost more than two STM4 or OC12, which is 622 megabits, links to two different ISPs. Yet the bandwidth of the latter, 1.2 gigabits per second, is greater than that of the former, 620 megabits per second, is much easier to configure as far as BGP traffic engineering goes, and is much easier to operate in the medium to long term. So what do we do? We obviously need peering and we need transit. How do we choose though? And it comes down to the cost of going to an internet exchange point. At an exchange point, we will get free peering. And we could pay for transit from an ISP which is co-located in the same facility, or maybe close by. Could be in a neighboring building or in the same city. Or we could just decide not to go to an exchange point and pay for the cost of transit directly to an upstream provider. There may be no exchange point in the vicinity, and so transit might be the only option. There's no right or wrong answer to this. Someone has to sit down and do the arithmetic, work out what the costs are. Should we be doing private peering? Well, as we've learned, there's a scaling issue. The more circuits we have to the more neighboring providers, the greater the cost will come. What about public peering? Well, this will make sense when more potential peers are located in the same location. And more is usually greater than two. And then there's the question about which public peering point we should go to. Well, the local internet exchange point is great for local traffic and local peers. And there's almost no argument for not turning up at one. Regional internet exchange point is also interesting. It's great for meeting peers outside the locality and might be cheaper than buying transit to reach the same consumer base. 